Ladies and gentlemen, boys and ghouls, it's time for below grade level. Watch out! We're right behind you! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Below Grade Level, the show where we take the books that we read as kids and read them as adults and ruin them. And then one of your hosts, Jonathan Eaton, with me as always is Becca Eaton. Hello. And Chris Zaleski. Hello. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a Sunday, it's cold, harsh light of day <laughs> that we're recording this in. Uh, and uh, we are recording with a returning guest and uh, oh. absolute, uh, I think, Christopher Pike and um, Sweet Valley High expert. <laughs> Christine Trader, hello. Hello. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to point out that both Christopher Pike and R.L. Stein, not the goosebumps bullshit, but the real shit, the fear street shit. Uh, I was born, raised, bred, whatever, whatever you can do with those books. Um, I did, and Gross. I'll leave that to the imagination. I did at one point in sixth or I think it was fifth grade have to have my mom come to the library desk because I was taking out 21 books at once, and I believe at least 60% of those were Christopher Pike, R.L. Stein, Fear Street books, and um, my mom did indeed tell the librarian to let me do it because I would wow. get through them very quickly. She was like, please, give, give her this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Christine and I uh, went to school together for forever. Uh, it's crazy that we didn't have, like, a little book club because we were both reading the same exact shit at the same time, but... We were too busy learning about the le, le, le Jean, Jean Jean de France uh, <laughs> and Madame Flynn's class and learning how cool French teens used uh, really hip slang like super Su cool. Super cool. And that I've kind of never thing. forgotten that. <laughs> Been to France a couple of times now and I've never heard a single goddamn person go, yeah. super cool. <laughs> I'm like, Madame Flynn, you lied to me. I just yell it till somebody <laughs> says something to me because then I know they know that Someone I know. walks up and they're like, Ma Madame. <laughs> <laughs> you say quiet in French. Uh, I should remember because Madame Flynn said it all the fucking time. Tetois. That's shut up. That's like the mean way. Oh, what is it? Tetois. That's shut Tetois. up. Yeah. I remember she would say, ferme la bouche, which means shut your mouth. It does. It does. Um, well, yeah, so you have read The Eternal Enemy, which is the book that we're reading before, but like you were saying before we started recording. Or is it The it Immortal it's Enemy? No, it's the eternal enemy. Oh, okay. The don't don't enemy. mess with the assonance in this title because that is <laughs> that is beautiful. Um, and I don't think I ever read this one, but but I do think that you're still going to be in for a surprise because this book is bonkers as shit. Yeah, I will say the only brush with Christopher Pike uh, I've had with an as an adult was they tried to capitalize on the Twilight Saga by re-releasing my very very top favorite. Christopher Pike like series which was I think maybe like six to eight books it wasn't like a really long thing mm -hmm. but it was called The Last Vampire and it was so good and mm -hmm. it was definitely something that like today people would be like what the fuck because like <laughs> it's like one of like the parents of the grandfathers is like the Hindu Krishna like it's like very what? strange um and I loved this book and I was in like a Barnes and Noble and they had like a hardback of like the first three like the last number and it was like it looked like a romance which this book is decidedly not like it was very <laughs> very strange and I was like yes and I bought it and then uh and, oh to give to my sister who was obsessed with Twilight and she was like not into it at all she was like <laughs> what the fuck is this I was like she's alone and she's 3,000 years old and like it's like very sexual a lot of the time and most of the time she's dreaming of when she used to get to have sex with Krishna the Hindu god Krishna oh my god <laughs> honestly that sounds like some straight up Christopher Pike shit I I'm oh, starting yeah. to think that he's a, a genius and we should do nothing but read his books yeah. because there's so many more on that list that I really want to read yeah we're, we're definitely gonna I'm, I think I'm gonna I think we're gonna move our love from Sweet Valley High to Christopher Pike because you weren't here for the last Sweet Valley High book we read, but it, it caused us to not record for like six straight months because it was it really, a letdown. It really like <laughs> emotionally ruined us, I think. 
I think you need to talk to me about which Sweet Valley High books you're yeah. considering. And oh, yeah. You need to be selective because, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we were just going in order and then we were like, that's probably not good. Yeah. It got, yeah. We're, we're not going to get the best stuff that way. We're going to get some weird the sad very, stuff. I will tell you the very best arc, as I think I said the last time at Sweet Valley High, is a three-episode arc that is quickly followed by a two-episode arc. The three-episode arc starts with Jessica quits the squad, exclamation point. And the immediate following two arc one, and this is when they go to nationals as a cheerleading squad. The two arc one following is about them, the same cheerleading squad getting lost in Death Valley. So those, <laughs> that's like a real good shit. Holy shit. Oh, amazing. Yeah, you started looking up, uh, so we, after we finished that one, we're like, man, this sucked. Yeah. And you started looking them up, and they were there were some insane sounding ones. Like, I, like uh, it just seemed like after a couple hundred Sweet Valley books, they're like, I don't know, I guess they're detectives now. Like, <laughs> Oh, well, there were sub, so many sub-series of Sweet Valley High, too, and then they tried to resurrect it in, like, the... I don't know, mid, like, I guess it probably was, like, the mid-2000s with Sweet Valley Seniors, which is when, like, an earthquake destro destroys, like, the, like, poor high school, and they all have to come there, and so oh, then it's Jesus. suddenly, like, there's people of different ethnicities and shit, like, in uh. Sweet Valley, um, <laughs> and, and it's, like, a little bit more, like, Degrassi, it goes there, like, Sweet Valley went there, there's, like, domestic abuse shit, and, like, oh, wait, that's the drug reason stuff. why we got, like, bummed bummed out about it is because yeah. it went there and it stayed there and it was just like yeah. this is just all we're reading about now is like emotional trauma <laughs> of like yeah teenagers. so sweet like, valley seniors is like a little bit more you know gets into like a different socioeconomic issues etc <laughs> my sister got very into not that my and i'm not ashamed SVU. to say <laughs> yeah exactly as an adult i was like i shall SVU. read these with you you're welcome like, you know like <laughs> let's bond yeah Okay, um, cool. Well, let's, uh, I'll do a real quick, so last time on The Eternal Enemy, um, Rayla, throughout the last episode, Rayla had, like, multiple super fucked up dreams, including one uh, that was, like, really graphically violent, where she was, like, strapped into a chair, and, like, her spine got ripped out, and her, like, head was getting sawed open, and it was great. And then she just, like, well, she'll wake up and be like, huh, that was weird. Um, she finds out, finally, that the VCR is... Uh, some sort of supernatural something or other because it records, it can record the future and that's what she did. She recorded the news two days ahead of time. Um, so she used that knowledge to bet on a, uh, I think it's a football game with her dad. She won $500 off of her struggling minister father and she took that 500 bucks to Vegas and bet on a baseball game and I think won like something close to like 20 grand. Um, and then outside of that, she had, I think she went on a date with Christopher and they had a real great time and they smooched. And then uh, where we last left off, she had just um, high off of her win in Vegas, stopped by Christopher's house in like the middle of the night. And um, he had some sort of weird like machine that he was hooking up to her head with electrodes and it, like hurt her and she didn't like it. So there's some, some weird going on with her brain, I think. I don't know. I don't think also, I'd like that either, to be fair. <laughs> I was like, it illustrates the need fuck. for a safe word. Like, yeah. you need a safe word, you know? Yeah, I just love, she's like, I'm so in love with this guy. He's amazing. He's like, let me put this thing on your head. Yeah. Now think. Yeah, cute, cute the weird science music start to play. But then it gets, like, <laughs> assonant, yeah. like, weird. You know, I like it. All right, so let's find out what happens in The Eternal Enemy. Chapter 9. <laughs> And the, the end of the last chapter is her saying uh, she's got to go home because she wants to watch the news. Too late for the news, I said. I want to watch I want to watch it. The news. Chapter nine. But I didn't watch the news that night. I slept instead and I had dreams. Many, but I couldn't remember them as well as the others. And for that, I was thankful. I was literally about to say, thank fucking God, because <laughs> her dreams are so messed up. They're like Hellraiser. I waited until the morning to turn on my TV and VCR. Early Tuesday morning, I watched the news for two... Early Tuesday morning, I, I watched the news for Tuesday night in my bedroom. The announcer was new. An exotic, redheaded female. Uh, she was Irish. <laughs> so uh, exotic. So exotic. My machine's magic worked on any channel. I had programmed it right after leaving Christopher's house just before going to sleep. The news was gruesome. Oh, this afternoon at approximately 12 <laughs> o'clock, the Hyatt Hotel in downtown San Francisco. Oh, tragically struck. Tra tragedy struck. Oops. <laughs> uh, 
the, can't the trust announcers. a drunk Irish person to read the news. <laughs> <laughs> A team of four window washers fell to their deaths from the 32nd floor of the hotel. A line, sec- <laughs> a line securing their work platform snapped. The cause, of the-, <laughs> the cause of the break in the line is unknown, probably a leprechaun. Witnesses to the tragedy say the victims were caught totally off guard. One moment the platform was stable, the next the people were plunging to their deaths. No one on the ground was injured. Only one victim's name has been released at this point. Jen. Jen. Jen Rowe. A 28-year-old mother of two children. I don't know. What? Is... <laughs> She's, oh, Okay. How do you say that name? We're going to go with Jean. I think it's Jean. <laughs> it's okay. Jean. But I do feel like if your name is spelled J-E-N-E, you'd be like, I can't take your last name, Mr. Rowe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I am, like, destined to be an anonymous corpse. <laughs> Jean Rowe. She's met her destiny here, it's, as it's the pronounced. Irish people knew she would. It's pronounced Jeannie. Mrs. Rowe was the only female window washer in the entire city of San Francisco. Our own news correspondent, Stan Adams, who was on hand in San Francisco to speak with Mrs. Rowe's husband about the accident. We move now to that interview. I'm sorry. My can brain's can we pause for a second? So there's yeah. Jean Rowe and Stan Adams. Yes. <laughs> Stan Adams. I love that beer. Is this like when Mrs. Doubtfire, like when like Miss Robbins reads Doubtfire in the newspaper, it was like that works. I guess. That's oh God! It. Yeah, his segment Kaiser of the Sosa. news is called uh, "Stan on Stan Francisco." <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> what followed was the media at its most pathetic. <laughs> Mrs. Rose husband. Nothing's changed. <laughs> right? Very well. Mrs. Rose's husband spent the majority of the interview sobbing while the reporter kept pounding him with the most inane questions. How does it feel to have your wife crushed on the pavement? Are you going to sue the city? How will your children grow up without a mother? Did uh, Jean ever express the belief that she would die young? What? what? I don't think that's what, what kind reporters... What fucking question is that? I don't... Th- how does it feel to see your wife like, crushed yeah, on the knew, pavement? She knew she'd die young. Hey, did you check out your wife's brains? They were everywhere. It was super gross. You want to see? Come check it out. It is sad. She was only 28. Um, yeah, we're uh, so old. Myself. I know. <laughs> oh, God. God. Oh, boy. She's the mother of two children. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I guess she's probably my age. Like, you know, she's probably like, like if 36 we, if she's got two kids. I'm like, nope, she's 28. I'm just fucking If we old. died, nobody would ask our partner if we thought about dying out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she's got two kids washing windows at 28 and a, a decade older I'm like here's my podcast about kids books yeah. <laughs> I'm also picturing like a flashback a movie of her like my dream is to be the first female window washer in San Francisco <laughs> and she's finally made it <laughs> Poor Mr. Rowe didn't know what to say except, God, why did this have to happen? It made me stop to think. Indeed, why? It hadn't happened yet. Oh, I could stop it. I chided myself. How small my thoughts had been to first use the VCR to make money. <clears throat> then I realized how good it was that I had some extra cash. Money is great. It was half past seven in the morning. Money. I couldn't get to San Francisco by car by noon, but I could fly. How exciting this was. I could save these people. I could save Mr. Rowe and his children years of pain. Jumping up from my bed, I called the airlines, made a reservation on a flight that was leaving at 9.30 and arriving in San Francisco at 10.30. Then I got dressed. I kissed my father goodbye before I left the house. You were out late last night, he said. Sorry, I've got your money for you. <clears throat> She's 100% going to watch this woman splat on the bed. <laughs> I oh, also shit. thought that that sounded like the internal monologue of like Sam Bankman Freed, where he's like, oh, yeah, but if I have money, I can do so much good so I can defraud all these people because then my, my ethical <laughs> altruism will work out for me. <laughs> I said it was yours. He stood up from his place at the table. He had been eating toast and jam. That's all he ever ate in the morning. So I like Cheerios now. with lots of milk. Yeah, Are you we all know. Right, Rayla? Yes, but I'm in a hurry right now. Where are you going? I paused. San Francisco. What? 
I'm flying up. I'll be back this evening, I promise. I open the door. You don't have to worry about me. (laughs) I do worry about you. He took a step closer, paused, uncertain what to say. Frankly, I was frightening him. (laughs) Our eyes met, and he tried to smile, but ended up shrugging and staring at the floor. It's just that I've never had a daughter before. I don't know if I'm doing right by you. For a second, you sounded like Hank Hill. (laughs) It's just that I've never had a daughter before. (laughs) I don't know if I'm doing right by you. (laughs) He's Hank Hill now. (laughs) What do you mean? You're wonderful. He met my eyes again. I think you know what I mean. I shook my head faintly. No. He sighed. We should spend more time trying to find your family. I stiffened. That's not necessary. Because I killed them myself. (laughs) Rayla. Twist. I'm sorry. I have to go. We can talk later. He took another step toward me, reached out, and touched my arm. What's in San Francisco? He asked. My heart. I left it there. (laughs) No one I know. I kissed him once more. <laughs> Goodbye, Father. He held on to me a moment longer and hugged me. Goodbye, Rayla. Objectively, he is doing a bad job. She's like, I don't know anybody there. I'll see you later. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> She's the in early the 90s. high school. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, we didn't have the helicopter parents we had today. Like, I could go down to the creek and do bad things, and, like, nobody <laughs> would say anything. But, like, I couldn't get on an airplane. You, you <laughs> for sure couldn't just be that. like, hey, I'm heading to New York for the day. I'll see you later. They'd be like, what? sit right the fuck down right now. Right after you went right to now. Vegas yesterday. Yes. Yeah, like, I'm like, the worst that it was like, I'm going to the mall, and I'm probably going to smoke cigarettes outside. <laughs> oh, my God. One time I accidentally took the wrong exit, and I wound up, I wound up on Route 50 for, like, 20 minutes, and my mom was furious at me. <laughs> furious. My flight was canceled because of engine trouble. There was another flight 30 minutes later, the gentleman at the desk said. I got on the 10 o'clock one. The half hour delay was hard on me though. When the plane landed in San Francisco, I dashed out of the airport and jumped into a cab. The height, I told the driver, downtown. Which one, he said. There are two, damn, are they both tall? He was a foreigner, maybe from India. Oh boy. Oh no. He scratched his head. One is tall, one is not so tall. They're both very nice. This is the 90s, so it's okay. It's a a throw. Apu was still around. (laughs) Take me to the taller one. My watch read 11.15. How long will it take to get there? 30 to 40 minutes. I didn't even know if the accident happened precisely at 12. What if it was a quarter to 12? (laughs) It would be on time to see them covering the bodies. I opened my purse, choked with $100 bills, and tossed one over the seat to the driver, because I'm a rude bitch. (laughs) I crumpled it up first, so it hit him right in the face. Here you go, you Indian man. (laughs) (laughs) What caste are you? (laughs) I'll give you another one of those. When we reach the hotel, if you run every red traffic light along the way, I said... The driver smiled and pocketed the money because that's how capitalism works. Oh, God. In my country, we always run the red light. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, my God. He drove his cab like a roller coaster on a downhill spiral and really <laughs> earned his extra hundred. After climbing out of the cab, I paused at the bottom of the steps of the hotel and leaned back to see a team of window washers working at what could have been the 32nd floor. The time, 10 minutes to 12. Now what I was what the now what was I supposed to do? I had rushed to the hotel as fast as I could, but hadn't formulated a plan of action. As I jogged into the lobby, I saw an assistant manager's desk manned by a girl who didn't look much older than I was. Out of breath, I hurried up to her. The scaffolding that supports the window washers is giving way, I blurted out. She blinked. What? Who are you? <laughs> Nobody, I pointed outside. I tell you, the window washers are about to fall, woman. Where do they secure the ropes when they're working? The young woman stood. She had been drinking a cup of coffee and accidentally knocked it over as she got up. She sopped up the mess with tissue, saying, They work from the roof down. How do you know their equipment is weakening? I saw it with my own eyes. She let her coffee, left her coffee, came around the desk. I must see for myself. <laughs> Who talks like that? We don't have time for that. I grabbed her by the shoulders and spun her toward me. I can only imagine how crazy I must have looked to her, yet I was unable to control myself. Send a man to the roof immediately. They're going to die any minute. The young woman was indecisive. You say that from you you say that from the outside you can see the scaffolding shaking? Yes. 
It's giving way this very second. She reached down and picked up the phone on her desk. The window washers are not employees at the hotel, but I will have someone on our maintenance staff look into this matter. Wait, uh. so it doesn't matter if they die because they're yeah. not employees of the hotel? <laughs> they're not on our payroll, so fuck them. I backed away from the assistant manager. Tell them it's an extreme emergency. Turning, I ran to the elevator. I did not trust that someone would get to the roof in the next few minutes. I didn't even know what I could do on the roof. As the elevator doors closed on me, I wondered if I'd find someone cutting the window washer's ropes. What? If the murderer would turn on me with his knife when he was done with the others and slit my throat. That wasn't what happened, not- obviously. <laughs> but before I could even get on the roof and see what the situation was, I had to find a way up there. The elevator only went to the top floor of the hotel, or rather, to the top floor where a guest stayed. I got off on that floor, you can't number just take 34. The elevator to the roof. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's. She probably can't just get there as a person anyway. No. Um, I got off on the floor, number 34, and frantically prowled up and down the hallways until I located what looked like a storeroom. It was unlocked, filled with vents and ducts and diesel motors. At the back in the corner was a steel ladder that led straight up. I went up the ladder two rungs at a time. The wind on the roof was incredible. Oh my god, I'm getting scared. I'm just getting like, fear of heights. I'm thinking, thinking about of, that. You ever that like Cecil Hotel documentary yeah. where the girl? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, that yeah. shit was crazy. Uh, Actually, the Super Bowl party I'm going to today is next door to the Cecil Hotel. So from the, their like roof no. that has like barbecues oh. on it, you look onto the roof. You, of the you see the water hotel. tower. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. Nice. Check in with us tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you didn't end up in there. <laughs> <laughs> the wind on the roof was incredible. It blew my mind that normal people could be out cleaning windows so high up on such a turbulent day. Then I remember that San Francisco was always windy. It's also just windy high up. I mean, yeah, every roof of every building is going to be windy. The roof was made of gravel embedded in tar. In the center of it was a low white platform that supported a gigantic satellite dish. A wall of tan steel approximately four feet high ringed the entire roof. I was the only one up there. Hurrying up and down the halls of the hotel had upset my sense of direction. I ran to what I believe was the right side and didn't see the window washers. I decided I was too late. Then I saw I was at the back of the hotel and the people had been working up at the front. I keep getting really fucking boring chapters. I know. I turned and ran to the other side. There they were, three stories below me, happily working away to music from a boombox when they had set upon the scaffold beside them. It was playing Pump Up the Jam. (laughs) I saw Jean Rowe. She was laughing at some joke. Pump up the jam. Pump it up. (laughs) Their ropes were secured in six places, the thick metal hooks that protruded from the edge of the narrow wall that ringed the roof. A glance at the lines revealed no critical signs of wear, although the ropes were without exception old and dirty. I assumed the weakness was further down the lines, perhaps where they had, <clears throat> perhaps where they were attached to the scaffold. A rope ladder led from the roof to the scaffold. The time was five minutes after twelve. I wasn't about to climb down it. I leaned over the edge. <clears throat> hey, I called. They looked up, all four of them. There's a call for Mrs. Rowe. It's from her husband. It's an emergency. It worked like a charm. Jean Rowe put down her soapy wiper and climbed up the rope ladder. Now all I had to do was convince the other three that there was an emergency at hand. I thought maybe Jean could help me out. I must have been out of my mind. Naturally, when she came over the lip of the roof, she was anxious. She was a surprisingly attractive woman. Blonde, voluptuous, with pouty red lips and green eyes. Attractive for a window washer. <laughs> Why she was washing windows 30 stories above the ground made no sense to me. Where's the phone, she asked. Paladin don't belong that high. Oh, yeah. yeah. Paladin you should be on the, on the ground. cover of a magazine, Jean. I wish Where's... her pouty lips, like, could she land on them or something? <laughs> That's what she uses protection. to wash the windows. She's just like... Mm-hmm. Where's the phone, hot stuff, she asked. <laughs> Downstairs. Do you know what the emergency is, she asked. <laughs> Your husband didn't say. Wait, I grabbed her arm. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, oh, we have to borrow again. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> now I have to know what happens. What happens to this hot window washer? <laughs> they slowly tip toward each other and began to kiss. <laughs> Rayla is not coming off as incredibly straight to me. No. She's always, yeah, commenting on, like, women's appearances. Yeah, it's also almost like a man wrote her. <laughs> this is like, also how about true. all the ladies are uh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> and all the men are, like, Indian. 
<laughs> or just, like, I don't know. Well, that guy in Vegas was gross sounding. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and the hot one is like, let me put a machine on you. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you are. It was... Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah. Oh, should I go? Oh, no. yes, I... okay. Okay. I grabbed her arm as she started to move past me. Your fellow workers need to come up right here now, too. She stopped. Why? <laughs> well, there's an assassin poised on a skyscraper over there. I nodded what? and continued. And the police are afraid he's going to shoot. He hates window washers. <laughs> what the uh, fuck? If I heard he that, that, I'd be like... Theory. Do you Fuck remember you. scary stories that, that to tell in the dark with the I want to vipe and wash your windows, the viper? That was a good one. No, um, I don't remember you, that. Yeah, it's like the guy keeps calling and saying, like, I am the viper and hanging, like, I'm coming soon oh. and at the phone. And then at the end, it's just like a German guy yeah. who's here to wipe the windows. <laughs> um, Holy shit. Jean was staring at me suspiciously, and I didn't blame her <laughs> one bit. Who are you? Do you work for the hotel? Yes. You look kind of young. I'm older than I look. Did my husband call and say there was an emergency? I hesitated. No, it's something else. It's that platform you're working on. It's gonna fall. Now Jean was angry. You dragged me up here to tell me that? Yes, I'm trying to save your life. Listen to me. Jean turned while I was talking as if to climb down the rope ladder to return to work. Later, I decided that hadn't been her intention. What? She was probably going to alert the others that there was a kook on the roof and that they might want to secure their lines elsewhere. I shouldn't have tried to stop her, but I realized that only in retrospect. At the time, all I could think of was Mr. Rose sobbing over his poor, dead wife and how that very wife was about to climb back into danger. If I was too late to save the others, I thought at least I would save the hot one. She had <laughs> a pair of baggy white pants much like those of a house painter, and they didn't do her figure any justice. <laughs> her oversized pockets was a heavy black flashlight. I leaned over and reached into oh my her God. pocket. Wait, what? Through her flashlight. Jean turned to protest. It was then what? I hit her over the head. What in the fuck? <laughs> Rayla. Well, wants, I think she wants to have, like there's a little bit she wants to touch her and have her way with her. I think there's nothing oh weird God. there. I couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. Oh God. The blow is she's solid. Like, it's not gay if she's unconscious. <laughs> I'm just happy to make sure she's safe. Just practicing it kissing was, on this dummy. <laughs> it was then I made sure she was re- voluptuous. Yep, just as I thought. Hourglass figure. <laughs> oh my god. The blow was solid. She dropped to her knees, blood running down her temple, and I I whacked her again on the side of the head. She's gonna give her fucking brain damage. You're gonna murder her. You're like, I'm trying to save your life. <laughs> that put her out. Jesus. I mean, I mean, it's good that, like, Jean didn't have, like, a machete in there. I feel oh like she'd God. be like, ah! Oh! It's good that she didn't stumble backwards and, like, fall off the fucking yeah. roof. Um, I felt sort of bad about it. Not enough, though. Uh, but I was, after all, trying to save her life. My guilt did not stay with me long. From the, over the side of the roof, I suddenly heard a loud thump and then heart rending screams. I didn't want to look, I shouldn't have, but I did. And what I saw was the end of three lives. The newscaster had been right. The platform had given without any warning. Not a single one of them had a chance to grab onto the lines, even to hang on for a second. It happened so fast, yet they seemed to fall in slow motion, like puppets in the wind. Their clothes puffed out big with rushing air. Their screams seemed to go on forever even when they hit the concrete and the red <sighs> exploded around their bodies. Damn, I Christopher still, I still heard the screams. I closed my eyes and still saw the blood. Christopher Pike, buy it for your children. <laughs> I literally read these when I was like nine uh, years old. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, same. I left quickly. I knew I had to. I was no fool. I had just assaulted someone <laughs> and then... They could probably blame me for sabotaging uh, the other thing and murdering three people. When Jean regained consciousness, she would blame me for the accident. Yep, even though I had done nothing but save her life. I was back down the ladder and into the elevator before anyone appeared. Did she leave Jean up there? Yeah, I guess. (laughs) She's just unconscious on the roof. The wind's going to just blow her off the roof. She's going to look over the edge and see all her dead friends. (laughs) Yeah. 
I bet in this alternate turn of events, like uh, like unbeknownst to Jean, her husband and two kids were coming to visit her at work that day Under the- when the other three workers landed ah. on them. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I left the, the hotel. The problem is now I'm door. picturing that. Like it's like a like a Looney Tunes anvil, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> what her husband holds up a like little the sign that says, like, going eat. around the head. Yeah. yeah. Um, I left the hotel by the back door. A crowd had already gathered out front. I wondered what the assistant manager would tell the police. I walked a couple miles from the hotel before I caught a cab. The driver, he was from Iran. Good thing I'm sure to tell the difference. I mean. (laughs) The brown driver had heard about the accident on the radio and wanted to talk about it, but I wasn't in the mood. It was still early in the afternoon when I reached the airport, but I couldn't get a flight back to L.A. until six in the evening. Doesn't she have school? Right. It wouldn't get in until seven. It was after eight when I got home, and it was only then that I remembered that I was supposed to have gone out with Christopher that night. There were two messages from him on our answering machine, one asking when he should come over and the other, apparently, placed after he had come to the house and found no one around. I called him briefly and told him that I had gotten tied up and I was sorry and that I wasn't feeling well and I would please talk to him the next day. And maybe I like girls now because he was really good. I'm working through some feelings at the moment. He was sweet about the whole thing. If only she had an Amazon Echo and she could say, I think I'm gay. (laughs) Wait, why did their video just disappear? I'm still here. Oh. Oh. There it is. Something happened. Our connection's shitty. Oh. You'll have to reshare it. Oh, fuck. Technical difficulties. The show. (laughs) There we go. Um, My father was out. He had left a note that he'd be working late. I curled up on my bed in front of the TV with a glass of milk and turned on. What else? The current news. I didn't watch it long. The window washer accident was the top story. There were interviews with both Jean Rowe and Ms. Assistant Manager. (laughs) Neither had a favorable (laughs) opinion of me. Yes, big surprise. The police were actively searching for me. I was concerned, but only slightly. If the cabbie who had taken me to the hotel spoke to the police, they'd know I'd flown into the city. As a precaution against such a possibility, I had not given my real name when I booked my ticket. Uh, Free the plane? Nine, I was <laughs> just going to oh, say, wow. like, wow. It's a fucking Wild West back then. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't find me, I decided. Besides, if they did, I would see it on the news beforehand and be out when they came for me. I laughed at the irony of it. And then I began. I feel to like she's also like, "Thank God, all my cabbies were brown people, and I assume no one will ask them." Like, <laughs> right? you know, that's good. Oh God. God. Uh, I had never seen people die before. I had saved a life I knew, but I should have saved all their lives. This VCR was a gift, but it was also a curse. If I kept taping tomorrow's news, I knew I would go insane from the burden of it all. Because each day I would know where tragedy was to strike, and if I didn't prevent it, I would be part of that tragedy. It gave me small comfort that Mr. Rowe had not been interviewed this time. What an expression, this time. What had become of the other time? By saving Gene Rowe, had I forever altered the course of the world? What was I doing anyway? I wasn't God. I couldn't decide who lived and who died. Why was this happening to me? This will sound pathetic, but I hadn't stopped to ask myself these or any questions. I had been having too much fun enjoying my new toy. I hadn't paused long enough to think through why it was that I should buy a VCR that could see into the future. (laughs) Pause. I like the little VCR joke in there. Of course. Uh, I like it. Of course, I had marveled at the machine. I had said to myself again and again that it made no sense that it should work the way it did, but I hadn't really confronted the issue. I hadn't wanted to face the questions, especially the most obvious of them all. When did the VCR tape the future? When exactly? Downstairs, someone knocked at the front door. Well, yeah, like, you're setting it ahead to record, but, like, when actually is it recording it? If you then avert that future, when did it record it at all? Like a paradox type thing? Oh, God. And okay. why? Catch up, Jonathan. I don't know. <laughs> Time travels hard. <laughs> the beginning of that paragraph was only like sort of like a like recap of the show Loki, though. Like it was like oh, <laughs> the branching paths. And yeah. All the time Downstairs, someone knocked at the front door. Except for the light in my bedroom, the house was dark. I crept slowly down the stairs. The day's events had spooked me, and I was afraid to answer the door. I knew it was locked, and no one could just walk in. 
Hello? I called from the bottom step. The person didn't say anything. He just knocked again. I'm assuming it was a he. (laughs) Who is it? I called a little louder. There was a lengthy pause. I was sure he'd heard me. He obviously didn't want to identify himself. This wasn't good, I thought. (laughs) My father was a minister, so he wouldn't have a gun in the house. This is America. Uh, Ministers uh, can have guns in the house. I didn't want to call the police. The police were searching for me. The person knocked a third time. I fought to keep my voice steady. Eh, I said, pretending to call to someone in another room. Why don't you see who's at the door? Why would you say Ed when it could be Ed? I know, like, what if it is Ed? Yeah. Without breathing. Then, just when I felt I could wait no longer, when I thought I must cry out, I saw headlights move, headlights move across the closed drapes. I recognized the sound of my father's truck. I listened as he parked and walked up to the door. I knew the sound of his steps. A moment later, he was unlocking the front door and stepping inside. Relief flooded over me. I leaped off the last step and gave him a hug. Rayla, he said without enthusiasm. I'm happy to, or with enthusiasm, I'm happy to see you too. (laughs) I squeezed him tight. I'm so happy to see you. He must have noticed my fright. What's wrong? I let go of him. There was someone at the door. He was there just before you arrived. Did you see him? No. He was there just a few seconds ago. There was no one. I shook my head. He must have run off when he saw you drive up. That's odd. Did you see him? No. He just knocked. How do you know it was a he? Right. I paused. It could have been a she, and I'm hoping it was. (laughs) It was a very masculine knock, so maybe it was a tomboy. You know, women knock on the door with their fingernails. like (laughs) Yeah, that's true. They're like, hello, mister. Men knock like this. Women knock like this. (laughs) Should we call the police? I don't know what voice we're doing for him anymore. (laughs) No, I hugged him again briefly. I'm safe now that you're home. Did you go to San Francisco? I hated lying to him, but I didn't want him to read the paper and think of me in the city at the same time, at at the same time the people fell to their death. No, I said. I went to the beach. It was a school day. (laughs) He wasn't concerned that I had ditched school. Okay. (laughs) Did you have fun? It was a nice day, I said, with the sound of screams echoing in my brain. <laughs> right. He's a pretty terrible father. He really is not on the ball. <clears throat> Chapter 10. In the dark, inside my dreams, I saw more. Oh, fuck. But I understood less. I awoke from the operation to emptiness. I tried to move, but couldn't. My throat was swollen. I doubted if I could speak. I opened my eyes with great effort. I, I don't like medical, medical horror. It's oh, yeah. Good. It's a, a, Buckle up. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's about to get gross. Maybe I don't like it because I read this book at an impressionable age. <laughs> yeah. Probably. I was in a hospital bed, alone in a room crammed with sophisticated life support equipment. Tubes dripping colored fluids ran into every orifice mm. in my body. Blech. The odor even of even your ears, even my I, ears, I'd like especially a list. my I'd ears. I'd like a list of the orifices, please. <laughs> <laughs> we got all, every hole you got. The odor of rubbing alcohol was in the air. Then I remembered my spine being ripped from my body. Who could forget my skull being sawed open? Yet I felt no pain. I felt hardly anything at all, really. I didn't know who I was, even and and even that didn't bother me. Time passed, days perhaps. People dressed in white, men and women, especially the women, with empty (laughs) expressions and cold hands, occasionally entered my room and readjusted the tubes and solutions flowing into my various orifices. Sometimes they would roll me over, remove my gown, and wash me with soapy water, but they didn't look at my eyes or speak to me, and I didn't speak to them. (sighs) I had no words, no thoughts, nothing. I was just a mass of living tissue. Flash prison! (laughs) Yes! More time passed. There were no windows in the room, so day and night were one. There was no way to count the days. Soon the nameless people began to remove the tubes attached to my body until eventually there were none left. They stretched my limbs, pulling my arms and legs this way and that. Just like... I let them do it. I didn't care about them, and I sensed they didn't care about me. They made me get up and use the bathroom. They had begun to feed me solid food. I ate it without enjoying it. 
They had me walk around the room back and forth. At first, I could walk for only a few short minutes before my legs would ache and my heart would pound, but then I could exercise for longer and longer periods of time. The people who watched, sometimes were, there were two or three, sometimes only one, didn't act pleased and didn't care if they were impressed. I didn't care if they were impressed or not. Then, slowly, thought returned to my mind. Late at night, when the room was dark, I would awake to images of a young woman walking in the woods, singing. I would see her by the beach, playing in the waves. Most of all, I would see her sitting beside an old man with white hair, talking late into the night. I didn't know who this young woman was, but I sensed that old man was important. He was the cause of everything that was happening, yet I didn't know what was happening. And I still didn't care. <laughs> what the fuck? Until I remembered the purple vial of liquid. Then I saw how I, the young woman, had injected myself with two vials of liquid, not one as I had imagined long ago in another place and time. There had been the green vial, but first there had been the purple vial. It was the purple liquid that was supposed to preserve my memory. The green liquid had been used to kill me. Memory. Part of it returned. My mission. My destiny. The secrets of the universe. They were mine now, but not my name. I still didn't know. This is know like going in like a lost direction, right? <laughs> yeah. We need to go back. <laughs> I still didn't know who I was, even though I had begun to care. I knew I had to escape, all because of the purple liquid, the purple vial. I sat up on the edge of the bed and stared at the wall opposite me. The only door leading from the room was to my right and locked. I knew that without checking, but the door wasn't so po- important. I knew I could still get out. It was what was in the wall that mattered to me. It was what was in every bit of matter in the room, in every atom in the world. The memory of everything that had ever been. Oh my god. I stared at the wall, and as I did, I felt myself merge with it. Uh, I saw the fine uh, fragments of white plaster become magnified, no longer smooth as they appeared to the naked eye, but pitted and scarred with craters and ridges that took on gigantic proportions the farther I explored. Yes, She's going into the quantum realm. (laughs) Yes, I was probing the wall for the ultimate element. I knew I could find it here. I pushed deeper. The plaster vanished, and I saw the molecules that composed the materials of the wall. Carbon atoms interlinked with oxygen and hydrogen to form substances that mankind had used since the dawn of civilization. What? Right then, I thought of all the people beyond the walls of the building I was trapped in. Emotionally, momentar- Emotion momentarily disrupted my plunge into the material, but I pushed it away because it was for the people of the world I had done what I had done. <laughs> there was no need for sorrow. It mattered only that I succeeded. The molecules gave way to the interior of individual atoms. Electrons pulsed around me. Neutrons and protons pulled me forward through a crack in reality where all emotion was left behind. I burst through to the nucleus of the atom and saw raw energy burning. That's fucking metal. Yet I knew (laughs) even that great fire was only a ghost image imposed on the background of something more permanent. I flew past the smallest subatomic particle into a vast realm of blank space. Space could never be conquered, I knew. And nobody can hear you scream, because I've (laughs) seen the movie Alien. It could never age. The universe was almost, but not quite empty. It was permeated by immortal space. Space, 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 space. (laughs) And because of that, I was also immortal. <laughs> Jesus. Unlimited power. <laughs> I arrived at a place known as eternity. A glance over my shoulder easily showed me creation. I stood at the <laughs> center of the wheel of creation and every inch of the rim was visible simultaneously. A turn and I was brought to where it had all started. The wonder of it all was the endless paradox. I was bigger than the biggest, smaller than the smallest. There was nothing in the beginning except a point. Incredibly dense, incredibly tiny. All around was only emptiness. For eons, I observed the point, but because there was no time, the eons passed in a flash. This is a long Then game. there was an explosion of light devoid of sound. <laughs> a trillion times a trillion subatomic particles were created and destroyed in an instant. Jesus What Christ. the fuck is that? This book's great. <laughs> it's really good. 
Energy flew in every direction. 15 billion years in the future, creatures called men on an insignificant planet orbiting an ordinary star would call this. It's starting to sound like Rocky Horror. Bang! Now. I was just saying that. <laughs> End meaning. Uh, now there was time. And much of time <laughs> passed before the energy cooled sufficiently to form matter. I was coming back the way I had set off, but I didn't want to return to where I had started. I waited and watched, and finally the one ordinary star formed, and around it spun that one insignificant planet home. I knew this was where I belonged. Again, I waited and watched and remembered everything I saw. Life appearing, flourishing, changing, creeping up from the oceans, flying through the air, walking upright, and finally becoming the conscious. The conscious. The con conscious... Of becoming conscious. Becoming conscious of I. But who, Evolution is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but who was this I? Empty space, of course, the supreme element, immortal. But anything else? The question... <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. The we're talking about the immortal realm and you have to sneeze? <laughs> Get it together, Jonathan. I thought you were professional. I guess I'm uh, got some atoms up I, his nose. I was just going to say that. I got oh, some well, atomic maybe dust also in my you, nose. Just, you just became conscious of I, yeah. so now you're more aware of your physical sensation. I, I think, <laughs> therefore, I sneeze. <laughs> uh, uh, the question, uh, anything else? The question that only the most delicate of feeling could answer. I saw all of history, but I stopped before the final days of man. I didn't want to see them because I had already seen three people die today, and it was fucked up, and I already knew the bitterness of the end. I had been told about it. I sat upright in bed, and a faint moan escaped my lips. <laughs> the light of my room was on, and even though I could vividly remember having turned it off, anxious, I glanced around, but I was alone. My head fell into my hands, and I felt my pulse pounding at my temples. I cannot keep having these dreams, I whispered to myself. I will go insane if I do. Yep, you will. I think, like, that time has passed, my friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Across the room, on top of my TV, a tape in the VCR made a faint clicking sound. The machine had been taping while I slept. Strangely enough, I couldn't remember if I had programmed it to tape before I went to bed. I reached for the remote. The machine had taped the news two days hence. <laughs> Sorry. Hence. Two days hence? Two, day, two days hence. Two days hence. Thursday night's program. The top story that night was me. <clears throat> a picture my father had taken of me two weeks earlier appeared in the upper left-hand corner of the screen beside the male announcer. My hair was loose over my shoulders and I was smiling. The man spoke with trained professionalism. The mutilated remains of 18-year-old Rayla Lindquist were found this morning in the home of her adopted father, the Reverend Spencer Lindquist. Police who first arrived at the scene said it appeared as if her body had been torn apart by a psychotic with a saw and hammer. An autopsy is underway to pinpoint the exact cause of death. Mr. Lindquist reported that his daughter had spoken of a stranger hanging around their house when he wasn't home a few days prior to her death. So far, the police have arrested no suspects in connection with this crime. The last person to see Rayla alive was her boyfriend, Christopher Perry, a fellow student at Grover High. He also reported that Rayla was upset about a man who'd been following her, but he was unable to provide a description for the individual, except to say that Rayla said he looked familiar. I didn't shake. I didn't even cry. When my story was finished, I calmly reached for the remote and turned off the VCR and TV. The truth of the matter was, I wasn't surprised. What else could be the result of tampering with the news except to become a part of the news? Or more precisely, I thought... I had upset destiny, and, and in so doing, I had pissed off fate. The I hope Alex <laughs> Jones has a similar, like, come to Jesus moment. <laughs> <laughs> what else could be the result of tampering with the news? <laughs> <laughs> the Grim Reaper probably had a quota he collected each day. It's not a destination. Snatched, <laughs> since I had snatched Gene Rowe from him, he no doubt felt justified in coming for me. The mutilated remains of Rayla sounded like a cure album. <laughs> a strange man who looked familiar. Now at least I knew who had been knocking at my door. My murderer. My calm didn't last long. 
All you right, think? I told. <clears throat> all right, I told myself, I know I won't die during the day. Dad will find me in the morning. That means I'm probably supposed to die tomorrow night sometime. So I'm totally safe for now. I know that, and I can use that to my advantage. Whoever's going to kill me doesn't know I know. So now but it's time to know, home alone the house. Know. But was that true? Maybe the real owner of the VCR had turned up. Maybe he had another crystal ball. Not as sophisticated as what I had. No four heads on his that would allow him to see everything in slow oh motion, but every God. bit as useful if he kept his ears close to the speakers and regularly made tapes. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> then, if he Does knew what I knew. Like, actual functioning of a VCR? Uh, yeah, yeah there was a, a long uh, discussion about four heads versus two heads, and she bought this one so she could do slow motion because four heads lets you do that. Yeah, if you Why really want to cap for the slow motion. Why would she assume that he didn't have, like, a more advanced one? She's like, it must be a less yeah. advanced she jumped to that conclusion very quickly. Her tiny early 90s mind just cannot even comprehend digital to... video disc. <laughs> A six-head VCR. <laughs> She's jumping to so many different conclusions so quickly that are all so crazy. <laughs> then, if he knew what I knew, he would also know when to catch me alone and rip my guts out. Maybe. There are still plenty of maybes left. And wise. Why would he need to disfigure me so? I wondered out loud. <laughs> oh my god. The time was three in the morning. I could do nothing now, I decided. I would make my plans later in the morning. I would talk to Christopher, explain what was happening, buy an M16, and fly to Australia if I had to. <laughs> that is an American. Yeah, that that's super, I'm yeah. About. I'm not gonna die. I swore out loud as I reached over and turned off the light. That man is going to get it before I do. Surprisingly, I was asleep in minutes. My dreams resumed almost immediately. Of course I wandered the streets alone. It was a summer evening and the sun had yet to set, but my clothing was flimsy and there was a breeze. I shivered as the air swept my bare legs. I was in a busy city. I knew that much and I had to find food and shelter. Those were my primary concerns. The light at the beginning of creation was forgotten. The bitter fate of the world was a bad dream I didn't quite believe. But at least I knew I was a young woman again. A young woman with urges, desires, and body. That crashes to me above all else. I wandered about for hours. I casually wondered if I was in San Francisco and could find Jean Roe again. The sun vanished and it grew colder. The bloodshot eyes of the homeless swam before me. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, One street led to another. They all looked the same to me. I smelled the garbage of the city, and then I began to smell like the garbage. <laughs> I felt numb, hungry, exhausted, like an animal that had been stirred out of hibernation. What the Finally, I came to a busy corner, and a middle-aged man who wasn't foreign in a blue business suit <laughs> stared at me as if I were in trouble, which was an astute observation on his part. I had on only a green hospital gown, so not that astute yeah. from this guy. <laughs> um, like, as a, like, 17-year-old in a hospital gown wandering around in the street. Smells like garbage. Smelling of garbage. Wait, why is she yeah. in a hospital gown? I think it's a dream. I okay. think she's escaped from that room, is what I'm thinking. Like, whatever uh, that other dream was. Oh, God. Can I help you? Ask the nice white man in a <laughs> suit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where am I? Where am I? Those are my first words. At the corner of Lake in Colorado. What city? The man was concerned. Pasadena. I'm only just getting concerned, but everything about you should be more concerning than it's appearing to me. Where is that? What part of the country? Pasadena is a suburb of Los Angeles. He took a step closer and offered his free hand. He carried a briefcase in the other. I shook his hand, and it was good to feel the warmth of his fingers. Ah. Pleased to meet you. I'm insane. It had been a long time since I had touched anyone warm. My name is <laughs> Paul Dorado. <laughs> That's, That's a great name. That's a great name. My name is Paul Dorado. Not made up. My car is nearby. Is there some place I can take you? <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're nearly naked. Let me put you in my vehicle. Yeah. Weirdly, and my car is also a Dorado. Dude, she's like... 
I searched what was left of my tattered ruin of a memory. I saw more stars than people. Well, I she is first... in L.A., so. <laughs> she has a map to them. When it, when the... When the dialogue said, my name is Paul Dorado, I really thought it was just her saying, like, my name is Paul Dorado. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, the stars, I saw more stars than people, felt closer to glaciers sweeping the world than to the cars driving by. But his mention of Los Angeles reassured me I was in the right place. Now I just had to find, what did I have to find? I couldn't even remember if it was a person or a place or an object. I lowered my head. I don't know. He put his hand on my shoulder. He was a nice man. I could tell. What's your name, girl? That's what Paul Dorado sounds like. He asked. My eyes were moist. I did not want to look up and meet his gaze. I said the first thing that came into my head. I am Rayla. <laughs> Rayla? Is that it? Rayla? The word did not sound pleasant, yet it resonated inside me. There was truth in the word. I raised my head and nodded. I am Rayla. I do need help. I'm lost. Where are your parents? That was the lost noise. Yeah. <laughs> I gestured helplessly. Lost. <laughs> where? <Helpful>. Lost. <laughs> I felt tears. I don't know where. He hugged my shoulder. You'll be okay, Rayla. I know a place nearby to take you. It's a shelter where many people go when they've lost their homes. You can rest there and get back on your feet. The man who runs the place is a minister friend of mine. He laughed. <laughs> I think the first thing he has to do for you is get you some decent clothes. You look like you just got out of a hospital. It was not a hospital, I muttered as I <laughs> led... As I let him lead me towards his car. It was a morgue. Okay, morgues are in hospitals. Yeah, but... You only go to the morgue if you're dead. So do you so think that it's Minister Daddy that she that is running yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. Is this like a flashback? Priest yeah, they, Dad. The, oh. They haven't really fleshed out her past yet, but I guess they yeah. just did. Weird. Okay. Chapter oh, 11. Mr. Pike. Wednesday was supposed to be the last day of my life. I woke up late. The time was close to 12 noon when I rolled. I'm sorry. I feel like my eyes aren't catching up with my brain today. <laughs> The time was close to 12 noon when I rolled over in bed and checked the clock. I wasn't totally surprised. Actually, considering all the weird places I was traveling in my nightmares, I was surprised it wasn't Thursday morning already. Yet I didn't fully remember the details of my dreams right then. I couldn't recall how Paul Dorado had taken me to the mission where I had met my father. So she, could, she can't remember the part where he put her into his car. Yeah. And, like, yeah. mysteries abound. Yeah, I blocked that out for some reason. I don't yeah. know. The amnesia factor. Do we, think, do we think this is like a recurring thing? Like, because it seems like she's hurtling toward being killed again. Like, like is it like a time loop? Like, a, yeah, like she's on a loop where it keeps happening over and over and again. She keeps just yeah. waking up in another so, body. So, was her spine ripped out in her past? <laughs> like, what? I don't oh my know. god. The you know, who can tell about spines? Yeah. <laughs> the amnesia factor was still in effect, and that was not so strange because dreams, no matter how provocative, were still dreams. I was still hours away from realizing I was a nameless orphan who had been found wandering the streets of Pasadena wearing a hospital gown. I wasn't asking myself the biggest questions of all. Who was I? Where had I come from? Has she never thought about that before? Right. Like, did she just gain sentience one day and was like, this happens to everyone, right? You just suddenly like are sentient as a teenager? Like, books and movies a lot where somebody suddenly realizes, like, they don't remember the rest of their life before they yeah. were, like, adopted and stuff. Yeah. Where I'm like, as, like, a sentient person, like, at some point, like, when somebody's like, Hey, like, where were you born? And you're like, my uh, my entire life up until age fourteen is a mystery to me. Like, yeah. maybe I, should I think it. I was tortured on a spaceship, and I saw <laughs> time and God and the cosmos. I'm, I'm a time god. It, we are <laughs> I, almost I, 100 pages into this book, and we've just discovered that she has no memory of her life before. Yeah, what, like, 16 or something? Yeah. Like. I, I want to do a quick plug here because I just remembered another Christopher Pike book that is one of his rare not horror books called The Tachyon Web that's like a sci-fi book oh. and is quite good. Cool. So and he has a pattern of but... writing this kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, like it's very much like similar. Yeah. Yeah, nice. 
Well, who was I? Where did I come from? I glanced at the VCR as I made my way to the bathroom. I didn't stop to see if there was more good news to enjoy. In Wait, fact, I- <laughs> when did she see any good news right? on that VCR? <laughs> Everything has just been awful. In fact, I reached over and unplugged the machine. It was a miracle, considering the grief I'd experienced since I had bought it, that I didn't toss the VCR out the window. Yeah. Of course I realized that would be littering. And I might need it later to see if I was still to be a news item. I repeated my vow from the previous night not to be caught unaware by my assailant. I debated going to school, then discarded the idea. School was for losers. Christopher and like, would be wouldn't there. you want to be around other people? Like this guy's yeah. stalking. I'd be like, hey, let's have a sleepover with all my friends at somebody uh, else's house tonight. hundred like, percent. Yeah. yeah, I would not be alone for one second. Christopher would be there, but I wouldn't he be able to convince him. He can't chop up all of us. <laughs> of the reality. Nobody's of ever chopped up. Here, a have Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> have Stacy. She's good for it. <laughs> Christopher would be there, but I wouldn't be able to convince him of the reality of what was happening unless I showed him the videotape. I would have to wait until after school then, and go to his home with the latest tape, which chronicled my death. I showered and dressed. Downstairs, I found a note from my father. He said that I sure was a sleepyhead and that he hoped I had a nice day. It would kill him to find me dead, I knew. They would interview him and ask what it felt like to lose a daughter he had known for only three months. What? Wait, it's only what? Been three months. It's only been three months? Wait. Okay, I'll get I'll give him a break for being so bad at this, but <laughs> and also who writes in a note like you're a sleepyhead? Right, yeah. yeah. I was thinking that too. Uh, Point three, have... I would not waste my lap potential last day on our showering. I'd be like, I was saying dirty. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would do it. And ask what bury if... the lead about <laughs> only being conscious of your life for three months. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, all she knew was that she loved cookies and milk. That's what I was just going to say. And well, no wonder she loves cookies and milk and popcorn because she has no memory of like of sensory book, things. She's going to like gain sent. She's going to die and gain sentience. And she's going to be like, I think I'd like cookies. The yeah. eyes. <laughs> what if she, what if we're going to transition into like a Hallmark movie where she's a young Santa? <laughs> 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 They would interview him and ask what it felt like to lose a daughter he had known for only three months. Then they would inquire how his God could let such a thing happen. There are terrible newscasters. (laughs) But they would not ask why God had selected me, of all people, 18-year-old Rayla, to change what was to be. Vaguely, I remembered something from my unconscious excursions about destiny and mankind. But those thoughts, like the others, could not be comprehended in a waking state any more than the images of the beginning of time could be accepted by the rational mind. Yet I did faintly remember the brilliant light that erupted from the tiny point. In the midst of the horror had been great and profound beauty. Awe, even, that came close to inspiring in me the mysticism that Christopher so distrusted. Briefly, I wondered if he was the best person to confide in. Twice I had tried, and twice I had choked up. This rationalist son of a bitch. Oh my god. (laughs) Did my subconscious know something my VCR did not? It's a question I personally (laughs) ask myself many times. What an excellent sentence. The like eight the eight theorem in Descartes' meditations on first philosophy, once he stomped himself back into being (laughs) Oh my god. I left the house and drove, because it is the 90s, to the mall. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to be where there were people and a five seven. Like the Little Mermaid. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Along the way, I kept glancing in the rearview mirror for a shadow. But if my would be murderer was following. What was that store, or like, what was that little food place in the mall that did cookies and you could get that little cone of tiny cookies? I don't know. That sounds awesome. Uh, uh, the the great was cookie. It? The great. It was the, like the great the American. Cookie well, the great cookie, cookie had like the huge cookies. Like the really big know. ones that you could like write congratulations yeah. on. Yeah, I think they had more than just tiny cookies, but the draw was like you could get like a cup of tiny cookies. A cup of or, tiny like, a cone cookies. or something. Maybe I'm they have cookies gonna... of all sizes, very yeah. small to very large. <laughs> That's true. I mean, if you're a cookie factory, you got to sort of earn your place in the mall. <laughs> you, you can't just sell only large cookies, only novelty-sized <laughs> cookies. Um, do-do-do-do. Along the way, I kept glancing in the rearview mirror for a shadow. But if my would-be murderer was following, he was shrewd and didn't give himself away and stayed in, like, the lee of the sun, so he didn't cast <laughs> <guess> a shadow. <laughs> 
Yeah, according to the tape, I was to meet my assailant before he killed me and recognize him enough to describe him to Christopher as familiar. Well, I said out loud in the car, <laughs> if I run into someone who fits that description, I will just knife him on the spot. <laughs> you know, so I, like a sane I, person says. I was going to say, I, like, I, I was like, she doesn't have a knife, but look, we're going to answer this right now. The first thing I did when I reached the mall was buy a big Swiss army knife. First of all, if you're going to kill someone with a knife, you're going to buy a Swiss, Swiss army, army knife, knife. Go to Williams-Sonoma and get a fucking steak knife. Oh my gosh, like, you might need to or open a bottle of wine later. You don't know. Yeah, or That's like the take tiny a lot of screwdriver. Yeah. Little, little, little nail clipper. Um, then I got myself a Hagen dazs and a little milkshake because I needed my milk instead of the separate <laughs> mall. And this is this 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 book is like offensive to people that are lactose intolerant. Like, it really is, yeah. Are you even a person? <laughs> and watch this. She's not, she's a fucking think. alien with or purple like in her veins. Or like or, a robot. Oh yeah. Um and watch this people at like Spine being ripped out, all the colored shit going in. Enjoy oh my God, an she's idyllic... a robot. I think she's space a robot. robots do run on milk. That's true. <gasps> That's true. Yeah, I don't know where the milk and cookies fits into the robot, <laughs> unless she's like that robot Santa from like the, the second Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. I know when... a little too much about Christmas movies. <laughs> Remember in Aliens when Bishop kept eating cookies that he dipped in his blood? <laughs> 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 And watched as people enjoyed an idyllic afternoon of shopping and browsing. <laughs> she heads over to the Brookstone and does like the chair for a little while. Yeah. Um, I had $20,000 in my purse, even though we've seen her spend a fair amount of money at this point, and couldn't think of anything I really wanted to buy except a 12 gauge <laughs> shotgun. One, I thought she was going to buy an M16. That's not a shotgun. That's like a like a, an automatic, like a semi-automatic rifle. So let's let's I know, get uh, it together here. Also, like I know it's America, but can you get a gun at a mall? <laughs> well, know. also the Brady laws and stuff are still in effect now. Like it's not as free for all as it becomes. I yeah. think so. I don't think she could just buy one. Just and like, she's a minor. No, she's eighteen. She's eighteen. How does she have an ID? She's only oh my god, months. right? She's three months Why old. Why does she drive? Wait, it takes like three months of like driving with others to be able to get a driver's license at least. Not you have to be on a robot. learner's permit first. Not for a robot. She okay. just like they gave her the manual and she went like, I am good. <laughs> I am Rayla. <laughs> she doesn't actually digest all the shit she eats. Like she pukes and like Spence, her st- uh, adopted father, knows, but he just plays along like for her benefit. Like, oh, man, right. you and were all the, hungry. All the girls at school just think she's like garden bri- bride bulimic. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, oh, Rayla's got a problem. She's going to appear in one of the Sweet Valley High books later like, as a bulimic <laughs> girl. <laughs> Um, the manager of the sporting goods store told me he wouldn't sell me one unless he saw ID. So maybe she doesn't have an ID and she's just driving around. I wondered if I should try to bribe him. You know yes, what? She might if you not. Want to talk, just do it. She might not have an ID. Oh, wait. Did she give an ID to Ed because he knew where she lived? She has a checking account. You can't have all these things if you have no history of yourself past three Was months. It's the like 90s, one of baby. checks. Maybe it's it was the oh, maybe it was. Oh, Whatever. I think it was his checkbook. So maybe she actually doesn't have an ID. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. That's crazy. Two o'clock came, and I figured Christopher should be home. I drove to his house without calling. There was no one there. Anxious about the passing. Is he in on it because he keeps attaching machines to her? Does he know she's a robot? Just I think there's something it. weird that's up with him, yeah. I'm anxious about the passing out because the oh the murder is familiar because it's Christopher maybe hmm? Christopher from the future was, yeah yeah Christopher future um, <laughs> future there was no one there anxious about the passing hours and my lack of a clear plan I considered my choices I couldn't leave the country because I didn't have a passport but I could leave the state I could drive to the airport this minute and take a plane to Hawaii because there's no security at airports at this point in time yeah I could go to a dozen different places yet I had to wonder if the fleeing strategy was entirely useful yeah she already bought a plane ticket using someone else's name yeah yeah who was supposed to kill me? It had to be someone connected to what was happening with the VCR, or else I was having the most coincidentally bad week <laughs> a teenager could have. What uh, the fuck? Like, now it's just like it's regular, but like, no, the worst week a teenager can have is like you get grounded or something. Uh, yeah. 
fail a test. You get like dumped and you fail a test. <laughs> not like my VCR showed me my death. <laughs> <clears throat> this person. I saw eternity and went insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bad week. This person, I finally decided, this man must have access to the same information I had. Why? Why? Like, why are you determining that? Given the fact that I couldn't defeat him by running, he, given that fact, I couldn't defeat him by running. He would find me, probably away from what few friends I had. I could only face him tonight armed in such a way that he couldn't anticipate it with a time machine of any make or model. Um, no matter how many heads there are. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, the best time machines have four heads. <laughs> Clearly. Yet it sounded logical, but I didn't like the sound. Yeah, it sounded logical, but I didn't like the sound of it any more than I liked the sound of my own name. Rayla, I said aloud. The word Wait, disturbed if me. If she's in a time lapse, what if her real name is like relapse or something? Like, that's a weird name. That's a weird Rayla. name. It is a super weird name. I went, oh, right. Yeah, I was thinking before, I'm like, don't you have a job? I went to work oh. at the library. I know that sounds crazy, but I didn't know where else to go. No, that sounds perfect. There's people at the library. Like, yeah. go to but your you job. But you have, like, a shift? So, like, you were like, I don't know where to go. I guess, like, like this is <laughs> I guess what I'll show up for work. Like, uh, you yeah, just I guess show I'll, up and you're like, up. I'm working now. They're like, you haven't been in in weeks. <laughs> Besides, at the library, I was constantly surrounded by people. Yep. And I loved my job, surrounded by so many books, so many lives, so much of the past. Uh, Relapse. The history section was always my favorite to browse in whenever I had a spare minute. I was... She didn't have her own history. I'm, like, tearing this apart. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> it was, therefore, no major coincidence that at about 6 o'clock, three hours before closing, I was standing in the history section flipping through the pages of a, civil, of a book on the Civil War when a bald man in tight gray sweat clothes approached me. I think he's the guy from the cover with the Dracula hands. Ah, uh. Who wears tight sweat clothes? Right? People that's, from the future. It's a very slutty look for a man. <laughs> you can see oh, the outline right. of my dick it's and everything. probably like a jumpsuit from the future. Yeah. Um, hello, he said kindly. <laughs> can you help me? I looked at him and didn't immediately pee my pants. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, that's, that's one point in your favor, I guess. <laughs> I looked at him. I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> Just usually when I meet starts people, starts pissing herself. Instant <laughs> pissed your pants. I looked at him and I shit myself. <laughs> he said, "Never mind." He walked away. <laughs> Works I'll every time. Oh my god! <laughs> my anxiety was growing by the minute, though. Make no mistake. I had been un unable to get Christopher on the phone all evening. The man didn't look familiar at first. Indeed, he looked to be like no one I had ever seen before. Like, he's he's Christopher. He he's should, Christ why, why else did she mention him right there? He's Christopher from the future. Yeah. His clothes were and different. And she's a robot. She's a robot that he built. Ah, yes. Oh, oh my. Yes. His clothes were. This is where it's definitely jumpsuit from the future. His clothes were different. If they were sweat clothes, they were not cut like any in the stores. They had no seams. His gray eyes were odd. They were unusually bright. <gasps> like a robot or something. Does Christopher have gray eyes? I don't remember. I'm remember? sure she's talking about his I eyes. I don't before. either. Yeah. I she, know she described them in detail, but I don't remember. Well, she described them in detail in the way where she was like, his eyes were endless suns of stars in the future of the cosmos. Like, that was how she described his fucking eyes. Yeah. Where are you going? Okay. Is it enough here? Can I maybe get a beer? No, but do you want one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I blinked as I stared into them and then hastily closed the Civil War book I was holding. Yes, I said. What are you looking for? His lips moved into a smile, although his eyes remained untouched by the warmth of it. He pointed at the book I was holding. I'm looking for a book on the Civil War, he said. Isn't that a coincidence? He tugged. I always <laughs> hoped the South would win. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he tugged lightly on my book. May I? Yes, of course. I let him take the book and watch as he opened the first page. It's one of the better ones, I added. Is it accurate? He asked. No. <laughs> what? He was interested. Why do you say that? I shrugged. I mean, it's as accurate as you can get, but I think you'd have to have been alive at that time to really get a feel for the war. 
Does that mean that she was? Is she questioning, like, historiography as, like, a thing? Like, you know, like, yeah. nothing can ever be an accurate representation because <laughs> history is written by the victors, you know? like that's a, that's a big thought for someone who's only three months old. I think there should be footnotes in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't this book quote from letters and speeches that were written by people who lived in those times, he asked. You've read this book then? No, I haven't. Have you? I realized that I had it. Suddenly, I didn't like this man. His eyes, they were so bright, they could have been electrified. Fear, faint but nonetheless real, entered my mind. Could this be the one? But he didn't look familiar. He just looked weird. I've glanced through it, I said, suddenly looking past him. Excuse me, if you don't need any other help, I have to get back to work. As I stepped by him, he said, but if I do need help, you will be there. Blech. I'll be around, I muttered, not facing him. I spent the rest of the evening in the back sorting magazines and trying to get Christopher on the phone. Finally, his mother picked up. She said he wouldn't be home till nine, which was exactly when I got off. Yeah. It was madness, I know, working for a few measly dollars an hour while my life steadily slipped away. I kept peeking out from the back to see if the bald man had left. He had taken a seat near the front. He could see everyone who was coming and going and was reading the Civil War book I had recommended. It looked like he would stay to closing. I noticed he had a medium-sized black suitcase resting on the floor beside him. Like Umbrella that's the, Academy. That's the most suspicious size of suitcase. I mean, <laughs> By ten minutes to nine, I was desperate. I'd even tried Stacy a couple times, but I'd been unable to reach her, too. I thought of Ed and got the number for Circuit City from information. I remember information. <laughs> I caught him at work. Ed, I said. This is Rayla. Remember me? Hey, yeah. How are you? Great to hear from you. Thanks for introducing me to your pal. She's something. You never know what's going to come out of that girl's mouth. <laughs> it's my penis. <laughs> <laughs> you two are seeing each other? Yeah, didn't she tell you? I guess she didn't want to break your heart. How are you doing, Rayla? How's your new VCR treating you? Let's just say it's changed my life in dramatic ways. I lowered my voice. Ed, I'm in trouble, and I mean serious trouble. You're pregnant? No. <laughs> no, I have someone following me. I'm at work right now, and I'm not sure, but I think he may be here, waiting for me to walk out to my car. I'm also pregnant. <laughs> Why would you jump to that? You're I'm like a, pregnant. You're like a city employee, and you're like, are you pregnant? You'd be calling me like to tell me you're pregnant? I'm space pregnant. Get someone to walk out with you. I'm not going to do that. But then I have to drive home to an empty house. It's Wednesday, and my father always works late on Wednesday. He helps pass out food at the mission. Often he sleeps there and doesn't come home till morning. Can't you, like, call him at the mission? I don't want to bother him. Actually, I didn't want to get him involved. Maybe get him killed. Although, according to the TV news, that appeared unlikely. Ed, would you do me a favor? Could you go to my house and be there when I get home? When are you going home? He asked. I leave here in about 10 minutes, and my house is only 10 minutes away. I can hang around a few minutes longer while the head librarian closes up, but that doesn't take her long. She's really good at being a librarian. <laughs> Ed sighed. She starts, she pre-closes the library, and there's not a lot of people there. <laughs> you would have to ask tonight of all nights. I have to be here until 10. I'm supposed to close up. Look, why don't you call the police? I can't. Why not? <laughs> I can't I explain it why I know this man is dangerous. They wouldn't believe me, but he is extremely dangerous. He loves the Civil War. <laughs> You've got to believe me. I do, I do, he said quickly. I can tell you're serious. Have you been dealing with him on a pass? Yes, in a way. Why do you have to drive home? Go to an all-night coffee shop like Denny. You can get, like... A grand slam, like, <laughs> moved over my hammy's pretty good. There's one not far from my store. I, I spent a lot of time there, Madison Parker. I can meet you there immediately after work. Then we can talk about it. <laughs> and if you keep ordering coffee, coffee, they can't kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> Denny's, it's America's <clears throat> restaurant. <laughs> That's an idea, I said. Indeed, home was the worst possible place I could go because it was at my house that my mutilated remains were supposed to be found. I'll meet you there, I said. But if I'm not there, when you get off work tonight, then drive straight to my house. Gotcha. Do you want me to stay the night? If you could. Ed was surprised. 
You must be scared. Can I ask, is he like a friend or just a Circuit City employee? <laughs> he's the guy, he's the Circuit City employee who sold her the VCR. But like, did she know him no. before that? He was just like so hitting on her immediately. Wow. Yeah, he met he's her there. Like he was very... hitting on her. He showed up at her party. Yeah. Um, and then he met her friend Stacy and now he's dating Stacy. Oh, so are he's they like dating? The yeah. He's like uh. the geek. He's like the geek squad guy from Nope that's like very like helpful <laughs> yeah. and like willing to go. The oh my god, yes. I'm just here. invested in you guys. Yeah, he's just like into this already. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yes. She also hasn't told him anything. Like zero things. Oh yeah. <clears throat> we said our goodbyes and I set the phone down. Another glance out the door showed me the man still hadn't budged, even though the librarian, Mrs. Garcia, had flicked the lights as a sign that people should soon complete their business. You know what I mean. The people on the computers. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, uh, a few people moved to the counter to check out books. Mrs. Garcia shook the bell on the counter. We were the only two on duty. She wanted me to help her take care of the people. I, I grabbed my shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I stepped out from the back, the bald man in the gray sweats stood up and picked up his suitcase and stepped toward the counter with his book in his free hand. He told Mrs. Garcia that he was new to the area and that he needed a library card. She directed him to me. Now I was ready to pee my pants. <laughs> I had it all saved up. His day glow eyes <laughs> raked me up and down as he stepped in front of me. Day glow eyes? She was saying his eyes were, like, a naturally glowing. That's so weird. Glowing gray eyes. Yeah. He's a robot. He set the book on the counter and removed his wallet from a back pocket. I have identification, he said. His voice was incredibly <laughs> dry. Like he needed oil, like the <clears throat> tin man. Yeah. <laughs> Good, I mumbled, keeping my gaze down. He gave me a valid California's dri driver's license that had been reissued the previous month. His address. Or issued for the first time. Ooh. His address was listed as 1357 North Spain Road, Pasadena. Pasadena! <gasps> Where she was found! His name was Henry Glover, born November 22nd, 1945 in Los Angeles. I turned away. This will take me a couple of minutes, I said. Take your time, he said. I have time. Nothing but time. <laughs> I've got all the time in the world. I literally own time. <laughs> I am time. <laughs> I don't, I thought. While making up his library card, my eyes kept straying, not to him, but to the picture on his license. It looked familiar, and I didn't understand how that could be when it looked like him and he seemed so foreign to me. The mystery did nothing to put me at ease about him. With each passing second, I became more and more convinced that I now knew the man who was supposed to kill me. I peed my pants seven to eight <laughs> more times during this <laughs> They were just soaking wet. <laughs> I was going to need a change. I finished with his card and returned to the counter to check out his book. He followed my every movement. I was so close to screaming, it was a wonder I didn't set off the smoke alarms. What? I don't know. When I was done, I turned away without looking up. Thank you for your help, he said. No problem, I said softly. May I ask your name, he asked. I had to look up finally. It was almost as if he was challenging me, too. I met his steady gaze. I'm Rayla, I said. I don't know why she didn't lie. <laughs> That's a curious name, Rayla. Quite beautiful. Thank you, Henry, I said. He lifted his book and his black suitcase, which looked heavy, but he handled effortlessly. It's a time suitcase. <laughs> See you later, he replied. It's he... just full of VCRs. <laughs> 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 then he turned and left the library. Did you know that man, Mrs. Garcia asked, glancing over. I swallowed thickly. I knew then that I needed to look no further for my assassin. He's an old friend, I said. Uh, you should and then say Mrs. No. Garcia handed yeah. me a towel uh, to mop up urine that had collected yeah. under my chair. <laughs> you should Before, say no. He's fucking creepy. You yeah. should have had an eye on me, Mrs. Garcia. Yeah, Mrs. Garcia, yeah, do Mrs. your Mrs. duty. Mrs. Garcia, will you take me to Denny's where it's safe? I heard they don't kick you out if you keep buying coffee. <laughs> Before I left the library with Mrs. Garcia, 15 minutes later, I got Christopher on the phone. He was beginning to explain why he had just come in when I interrupted. Can I come over? I asked. When? <laughs> now. Now is not a good time. Both my mom and my dad have the flu. If you come, you might catch it. I don't care. I have to talk to you. I have a tape I have to show you. I froze. 
I had not brought the tape with me. It was at home, in my machine, that accursed VCR. It says that accursed VCR in the book. What does this tape have on it? He asked. A copy of the news. Dynasty. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I need to get that tape before I talk to you, but it's at my house and I can't go to my house. Why not? He asked. Once more, I lowered my voice. A man has been following me. I believe he's waiting in the parking lot right now to follow me home. My father's not there. That's why I can't go there. Christopher was silent a moment. Are you serious? (laughs) Yes, this man is out there and he's after me. But please don't tell me to call the police. I can't. (laughs) And please don't ask me why. Just help me, okay? Sure. Do you have someone to walk out with you? Mrs. Garcia. She's going to leave in a minute. Oh, then leave when she leaves. Get in your car and immediately lock your doors. Drive straight here. Don't worry about my parents. They won't mind once I explain the situation (laughs) about needing to watch a videotape with them. (laughs) I feel like Ed's going to die. Like he's going to her house. Oh, because so like she's going to change. No, he's going to Denny's. I thought he was going to meet her at Denny's. Oh, I forgot. But she did say like, if you don't hear from me, then he's going to sleep over. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I need to get the videotape. Forget the tape. We can get it tomorrow. No, tomorrow's no good. I can't talk to you about what's happening unless you watch the tape first. Believe me, you'll think I've lost my mind. If I can get the tape, it's if it's I can get the tape if it's so important to you. I can get it now and be back before you arrive. I I don't know what the fuck my voices are doing right now. Um, (laughs) No, the house is locked. I'll have to meet you there and give you the key. Come here first and give me the key. You don't want this guy to know where you live. Oh, he already knows that. Why is he waiting to follow her home? Like, like go home. Like, go. Yeah, what? <laughs> Rayla. I, I figured he knew a lot of other things about me, maybe more than I knew myself, because I've only been sending it for three months of my entire <laughs> life. I continued. Oh, here's like the mission statement of this whole book. Uh-huh. <laughs> Time is critical here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to show you that tape as soon as possible. Meet me in my house. You're closer to it than I am. If you leave now, you'll be there before me. This man will do nothing when you're around. How can you be so sure? Yes. I don't even know where the words came from. I just blurted them out. Whoa. Because you're too important. What? What? Mm. That Mm. doesn't make any sense. Uh Oh. She knows something. Oh, God. Something about that picture on his license. Because he's you. Because he's you. Because he's genius man who built a robot girlfriend, obviously. Robot girlfriend. Again, it's weird science. Weird Pike science. Book. Yeah. It is weird science, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 12. Solving time crimes with my robot girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the library parking lot was empty when we went outside. Mrs. Garcia sensed I was upset about something because I had pissed myself so many times. <laughs> but I didn't confide in her. I practically ran to my car when I saw the coast was clear, but I didn't climb inside until I checked twice that the back seat was empty. I had seen a horror film or two in my day. My like, day, meaning the past three months. The past three months. months. <laughs> oh, yeah, which is like, it's my favorite movie. It, from the creature from whatever. I've seen it twice in three yeah, months. I saw it yesterday. It's my favorite movie. It's my movie. favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher was waiting on my porch when I drove up. He stood and hugged me as I got out of my car. Is he following you? He asked. I don't know. I didn't see him. But that doesn't mean anything with this guy. <laughs> Who is he? Christopher asked. I hurried toward the front door. I don't know his real name. He goes by fake ones, but he's dangerous. What? Where are you getting this information from? I aimed the key at the lock and missed. <laughs> and I had to use b- both hands to get it in the hole. That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> He's killed before. Christopher was astounded. This is ridiculous, Rayla. If he really is following you, you must go to the police. I gave him a sharp look. Don't fucking think for a moment I made this guy up. Christopher was not flustered. No, all I'm saying is that you may not have a clear idea of what he wants from you. Let's call the police and let them assess the situation. I slammed my fists into my sides in frustration. I told you I can't go to the police. We are dealing here with a force beyond anything they know. (laughs) Christopher took a step back. What kind of force? He asked. I turned back to the keyhole. You'll have to see the tape. I want you to look at it now, here, before you do anything else. The man will not come while you're here. You don't know that, he protested. 
It's one of the few things I do know. How though? But yeah, you don't. You, you don't. don't know that. <clears throat> we went inside and locked the door behind us. Christopher made a quick check of the first floor of the house to see that no one was there. I ran upstairs to get my VCR. My bedroom light was on, which surprised me. I hadn't left it on when I went out of the house. Or had I? <laughs> Last night when I awakened, the light had also been on, even though I remember turning it off when I went to bed. Then, at three in the morning, I had watched the tape describing my gruesome death. Afterward, I had turned off the light and gone back to sleep and dreamed of wandering the streets of Pasadena half-naked. Yet if I had gotten up in the night again and turned on the light, I might not have noticed it in the light of the day. Fuck. God. Light. So the light, light was on anyway. That was your whole page. But why would I have gotten up and turned on the light, I asked myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, it's like it's, it's like it's on purpose <laughs> that you get the boring it's pages. Dusty. It's Dusty. It's dusty, read the book with us. Oh, dusty. For the same reason I got up and turned it on before. <laughs> <laughs> for the same reason I got up and turned it on before. Yes, Good I job, remember dusty. now how the light had been on at least once before when I awakened from a nightmare. But Not just the dusty night before. He was like, thank you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't answering my own question. I had been sleepwalking. The bathtub incident proved that. <laughs> but what was my need for light? Was I doing something during the night? I had to I recharge the my VCR. solar batteries. <laughs> yeah. I studied the VCR. The plug dangled from the back of it. The machine was off. I hadn't checked the tape that afternoon when I got up because I felt I'd already seen enough bad news. Plus, I had not reset the VCR after viewing my death story. There should have been nothing new on the news. Yet, my bedroom light was on. I must have turned it on again after turning it off. I must have been up one more time during the night. I decided I should have another glance at the tape before I showed it to Christopher. I stepped to my bedroom door. I will say, door. this is reminding, like, how good a pain in the ass a VCR is. You're like, oh, I had to rewind, reset uh, yeah. it. Like, oh, yeah. like, oh, there was, like, a whole chapter where she was like, I read the instructions, and here's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I stepped to my bedroom door and called down to him. I have to use the bathroom. I had a milkshake earlier, and I really got a shit. <laughs> I'll be down in a minute. I was going to say, she's peed for mankind at this point, I assume. Okay, okay, he called up. I closed the door and plugged the VCR in and settled in front of the TV with my remote in hand. I didn't rewind the tape. I started it where I'd left off. Immediately after the story of 18-year-old Rayla Lindquist's mutilation, I pressed the play button. The same male announcer who had read the piece about my murder came on. Good evening, he said. Our top story tonight. Oh, no, I gasped. I pressed the pause button. The news was on again. Thursday nights, the same news, starting over from the beginning. Gasp, she Only changed the future. It wasn't the same, because instead of my picture in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, they had Christopher's. Dead, I thought. Now they would get him instead of me. But I had to know for sure. Shaking, tears already welled in my eyes, I pressed the play button again. In Pasadena, the body of 18-year-old Christopher Perry was found this morning in the home of the Reverend Spencer Lundquist. It appears as if his neck was broken by a very strong man. <laughs> what is with the sex of everybody's a man? Like, come on. Come on. But an autopsy no woman is now could underway. have broken his neck. <laughs> I know. Um, but, but an autopsy is now underway to determine the exact cause of death. Mr. Lindquist reported that he spent the night working at a homeless mission and did not come home until approximately 8 in the morning. Missing at this time is Mr. Lindquist's adopted daughter, Rayla, Rayla Win Lindquist. <laughs> my picture replaced Christopher's. It was the same one they used for my mutilation. <laughs> in this case, the How pastor dare. continued. According to Mr. Lindquist, Rayla spoke of a stranger who, of a stranger hanging around their house a couple days ago. It is assumed that Rayla was abducted by the same person who killed Christopher. So far, the police have arrested no one in connection with these crimes. Christopher's parents have reported that their son left the house at approximately nine the previous night to go to the aid of Rayla, who had called from her job at the library complaining about being followed by a man. He didn't come home or call after that. Both Rayla and Christopher were students at Grover. <laughs> <laughs> I pressed the stop button and leaned over and sobbed on my knees. My confusion was as great as my sorrow. Wait, what? I feel like that's a weird turn of phrase. Like you're sobbing onto your knee. Like it feels like. Oh like, yeah, see, I, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like oh. sobbing with head down on knees, but it could yeah. be kneeling at, while sobbing. I guess it it's is something like, we should I, always. Think I really about. thought she was like crying directly onto her kneecaps. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, wow, yeah. you're really flexible when you're 18. Yeah, like I'm just gonna wipe away my tears right now. I'm yes. So <laughs> Ow, they're bony. <laughs> I didn't understand how tomorrow's news could have changed so drastically in the space of a few hours. Butterfly effect, bitch! You changed the future because you knew it. Ashton Kutcher knows. Come on, man. Amy Smart. One moment, I'm a goner, and the next, it's Christopher. What element had been altered in the scenario? You um, brought Christopher to your house. <laughs> of course, there was only one. When the news... When the first news had been recorded, I didn't know I was to die. Then, because I knew someone else had died, I sat up with a jolt of realization. I wouldn't have brought Christopher to my house tonight if I hadn't known I was supposed to get killed, I said out loud. That knowledge was the big change. Christopher, I yelled as I unplugged the VCR and cradled it in my hands like a baby. He was halfway up the stairs when I opened my bedroom door. We have to get out of here, he said. I said, what's happened, he asked. I'll explain later. You cannot stay in this house. The man might come here after all. I literally shoved him down the stairs, breaking his neck. <laughs> come on. I do think she's going to kill him. That's how it's going to go down. Ah. She's going to realize the old man is him and then go and then And then, and go then kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. We don't have a second to lose. Christopher put his hand to his head. He was sweating profusely. Then why are you taking mm. your VCR with you? I need my VCR. I need it. <laughs> I have one at my house. Not like this one. This one has four heads. Let's just go. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Two head shit VCR. Yeah. You can't slow mo shit, Christopher. I'll explain it in the car. We were in the living room heading for the front door when I noticed that the living room window was shut. <laughs> my father was a fresh air addict. He never closed Couldn't that get window. Of the stuff. <laughs> Even when it was freezing outside. I set the VCR down on the coffee table in front of the sofa and checked on the window. Someone was here, I muttered. Christopher stood behind me. Are you sure? I tried to pull the window up. I was pretty strong, but I couldn't budge it. Not strong enough to strangle a man. <laughs> it was as if it had been nailed shut. I'm quite sure. I stared off into space for a moment. Why would he want the window shut? I whirled around. Are you sure that there's no one in this house? I checked every room except your bedroom. There's no one in my bedroom. Christopher staggered slightly to the left. Then why are you suddenly so anxious to leave oh here? God, what's up with him? I don't. He's probably time paradox. Just, I don't Cause know. Because his old yeah, self like is going to show up, and he's two gonna... versions of him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I pointed at the tape. It's because of what's on this tape. I paused and eyed Christopher. You're breathing heavy. Do you feel all right? He put his hand to his head again. <laughs> I'm fine. Well, he probably has a flu. His old family. Oh right. <laughs> He's like flu ridden oh, and just wants to go to bed. Yeah. Uh, I took so much NyQuil before I came over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he put his hand to his head again. I'm fine. I took a step toward him. You don't look fine. What's wrong with you? He rubbed his eyes and staggered back. Dizzy. Maybe it's all this running around. Let's get outside in the fresh air. He reached for the VCR. I'll take this. No, I'll get it, I said. It's no problem, he said. And he smiled at me as he leaned over to pick it up. His face was soaked with perspiration. Did I ever tell you how cute you look when you're scared? Uh oh. No. I don't like that. I had to grin. No, that's sweet. You don't he have stretched, to grin. <laughs> he stretched forward and lightly kissed my lips. Not you're sweet, sweet. Rayla. Then he collapsed. I, yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> Ew. Then he collapsed unconscious on the floor what? at my feet. I didn't know I was that good of a, a, a kisser. <laughs> Christopher, I, I screamed. I wonder if Jean Rowe would like it. <laughs> Every light in the house went out. God, I whispered, in the dark, alone, yes. which had never frightened. <laughs> do do, wait, do you have my VCR? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where I put that. <clears throat> in the dark, alone, which had never frightened me before because I could see so well at it due to my robot night robot vision eyes. Oh my God. <laughs> Better than anybody I knew, but this dark was unreal. It seemed to come from inside as much from outside. What? Emerging from history, I couldn't remember. What? I stepped away from Christopher, <laughs> trying to pierce the blackness in any direction, but seeing nothing. Listening intently. With hearing that was better than most people's, but hearing nothing. What? You know, robot. The same excellence could not be applied to my speech, however. I wanted to scream, to bring the neighbors running, but my throat was choked with terror. My voice was dying of asphyxiation. All I could do was also, beep loudly. <laughs> also, I knew the man who had killed the lights must be just outside. 
I backed into the phone stand and almost knocked it over. I frantically picked up the phone. There was no dial tone. My hand flew to my pocket. I still had my Swiss Army knife. Someone knocked on the front door. Jesus, I whispered. <laughs> yes? <laughs> the door was locked. I did not have to answer it. Silently, I scampered the couple steps back to where Christopher had fallen. I shook him hard, and he moved like the like a bowl of jello. Christopher, I hissed, wake up! He was out cold, and nobody had laid a hand on him. The person knocked on the front door again. I ran to the back door. It was locked from the inside, but even when I turned the catcher, refused to open. I hadn't locked the man out. He had locked me in. Uh, bum, bum, bum. That's not how doors work. <laughs> It made no difference. There was no way I was going to leave unconscious Christopher to the mercy of the man. I returned to the living room in time to hear the man knock a third time. I realized this could not go on forever. I was trapped. Who is it? I said softly, finding my voice. There was a lengthy pause. Then a voice, not exactly the same as that of the man in the library, more familiar, really. And I didn't know if... Oh. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. Oh. I did not realize my iPad would try to pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> How rude. Um, then a voice, not exactly the same as that of the man in the library, more familiar, really, but I don't know if I was just listening differently, said, it's me, Rayla. You have to let me in. I moved closer to the door. My trembling had ceased, although my, uh, although my heart continued to pound silently in my chest and like thunder in my head. I think I stopped breathing when Christopher collapsed and had yet to start again. Why do I have to do anything you want? I whispered. <laughs> Whoever was outside had excellent hearing as well. He heard me easily enough. There is nowhere for you to run, he said. Why don't you just break the door down, I asked. I know you're capable of it. The less I do, the better. <laughs> I was close to the door now. <clears throat> if I let you in, will you promise not to hurt Christopher? I asked. He didn't hesitate. That I can promise. A tear ran over my cheek. Will you hurt me? I think we both know the answer to that, Rayla. Yes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes I mumbled. And a part of me did understand. Christopher was important. I was expendable. I had been tossed aside before. <laughs> that was part of what my nightmares had been about. I reached out and unlocked the door and opened it. The man stood perfectly still on the dark porch, a statue carved from the night. Yet his eyes were so very bright. He carried his black suitcase in his left hand. May I come in? He asked. I stepped aside. Yes. Can I have the lights back on, please? He nodded. And as he nodded as he stepped by me and made a flicking motion with his right hand. All over the house, the lights came on at once. Christopher lay face down in front of the couch. The man glanced at him. He is unhurt, he asked. I believe so. What did you do to him? I gassed the interior of this house. The gas is dissipating as we speak. Is that why all the windows were shut? Yes, he said. The gas didn't affect me. No, it doesn't affect me either. What's wrong with Christopher that it bothers him? The man was watching me. He had not changed out of his gray sweat clothes. You're asking the wrong question. <laughs> I understand, I said. It was we who were different. I gestured to a chair opposite the couch. The man sat down, his suitcase resting on the floor beside his left knee. I wondered what was inside. I sat on a chair between the man and Christopher. My almost boyfriend appeared to be breathing easily. Will you be staying long? I asked the man. His expression was impassive. It will not take long. A shiver went through my body, but I kept my voice even. Who are you? You know who I am. Where are you from? You know where I'm from. The, the question is, should be, <laughs> when am I from? Oh. I or what are you from? <laughs> How are you from? <laughs> I stopped. The pupils of his gray eyes were wide. Dark tunnels into an alien mind. Who am I? I whispered. Wrong question, Rayla. I don't understand. What, what am I? But I did, even before he reached out with his right hand for my left hand. I understood that there could be no happy ending for me because from the beginning I had been cursed. I gave him my hand freely, yet I flinched as his fingers encircled mine. Will it hurt? I whimpered. There are many kinds of pain in this universe. I just can't fucking believe it. It is Hellraiser. Like, it is Hellraiser. Yeah, oh my god, it yes. It is. Just the start of the book to where we are now. Yeah. Oh my god. 
There are many kinds of pain in this universe, he said, tugging on the ring finger of my left hand, the one I had cut Saturday night at my party. I still had my bandage on, but he pulled that off in a second. Then, actually, this is very disturbing. I don't even want to read anymore because I haven't even looked and I'm already dreading it. He took off more than the white <laughs> gauze. <laughs> Leaning closer, I saw he was removing my skin. It is Hellraiser. Here you go, Christopher. Oh, or it's the oh, moment of Terminator oh, 2. my where fucking God, I accidentally read I don't a little even bit. want to look. Oh, my God, you're going to lose your shit. Yes, he was just tearing it off bit by bit as if it were made of wax. The weird thing was I didn't feel any physical pain and there wasn't a lot of blood, but he was dead right about there being many kinds of pain in the universe. I felt a big one right then, one I had never experienced before. When I looked past where the skin had been removed from my finger and saw nothing but copper wires and silver <laughs> metal, nothing yes. else, nothing living. Yes. What are you, he corrected. That's the question. You are Rayla, a robotic experimentation <laughs> logistical algorithm. Look at him spell algorithm because nobody knew what it was back then. <laughs> algorithm. Yeah, that didn't feel right. <laughs> like on the bongos, baby. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. Oh my god. Once in another time, you had another name. What? I stared down at the mangled flesh of my finger, the uninjured circuitry, and didn't have to ask myself why I didn't weep. My tear ducts, I realized, were just a switch that I chose not to throw. I see, I whispered. Yes. He removed something that resembled a ray gun from his back pocket and pointed <laughs> at me. I have to destroy you now, and even though it is not logical, it will give me a measure of satisfaction to know that you died with your memory intact. He aimed the weapon at my head. Do you remember the name Sarah? Sarah. I closed my eyes. The shock had broken through my amnesia. I felt the purple vial in my hand. I saw it. The secrets of the universe were mine for a second. Of course, a robot could process a trillion bits of da data in a single moment. I remembered everything, and it was no dream. Uh, yes, Grandfather, I said. But it was you who named me. <laughs> oh, God. But, but, I love but, you're going, but, like, but, Sarah, but, sentient but, android robot. Yeah, yeah. Android. Yeah. Sentient android. <laughs> Android robot android. <laughs> it's like University of Maryland, University College. Yeah. Which is really redundant. Maryland Institute College of Art. Look at how much of the book is left. <laughs> We're more than halfway through, but like, what the fuck else is oh my God. could even this happen? This isn't an M. Night Shyamalan joint. It's just not, it's not just like, oh, here's the twist and it's over. This yeah. shit keeps giving. Oh my God. I can't wait to see what the. Ed has to show up and scare this robot guy away. Yeah. And then or at least like knows. offer him a joint or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like it still doesn't explain the fucking VCR. Yeah, what is that? Maybe the edgy thing. thing. And it's like all VCRs do that. Like, I was thinking that like is it just because of her like would literally any VCR Oh, any VCR would do it. Do so weird shit? Yeah, it's not the VCR, it's her. Oh god. Holy shit. Oh, it's her like my, like dream waves like fucking with it. Because it seems like oh, she, yeah. when she has the weird dreams, the VCR does something. Yeah, yeah, I think the VCR only records when she dreams or vice versa, or her dreams activate yeah. the VCR. And yeah, when he put the stuff, when Christopher put the electrodes on her head, he was like, you know, think of something. It like hurt her immediately because she's a yeah. fucking robot. She's got oh, boy. Sizzle, sizzle thoughts is what she's got. Sizzle thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is the best book we've ever read. <laughs> yeah. Christopher it's, Pike is so actually quite good. It's like, really yeah, like, everything. This is pretty good shit. Yeah. Like, not only is it written well and crazily, but the content is absolutely insane. And he's legitimately, like, scary. Like, like to me, I think he's really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he gets... I mean, these books are way, like, more violent and grosser than, like, Fear Street. I always, I always remembered Fear Street as being, like edgy and then we read it and we're like this is so yeah. fucking boring it's so it's so <laughs> tame and boring like sweet valley high is scarier than fear street <laughs> that's because all those blonde girls freak you out <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> jessica is terrifying i guess she's a sociopath yeah, for she's sure a, a absolute sociopath and i would be scared of her um wow okay. well christine thanks for <laughs> taking the what, time what out of your day to read this shit with us. And here's where I reveal to you that I too am a <laughs> <laughs> What does your name stand for? It's uh, 
Oh, oh that's too way too way long. too many. Started, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like letter eight. It's like I fucking don't care. I don't even know where to start with a C for a for a robot. Computer. Compute computerized haptic registrative robot. Ro- robot. Computerized <laughs> humanoid robot. Individual. D- individual. Okay. We've set to Impregnate. institutionalize <laughs> nerds. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we did it. That's your robot name. That's everyone's homework. Yeah. Make your name an acronym. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, half the work's done for me. Yeah. <laughs> Still the first four. Oh, yeah. Computerized Five. robot individual. What was the acid Sent. Really? Sent. Sent. Uh, sexy. Sentient. Sentient. Sentient, yeah. Or just sentience, so, you know, like the general concept. Yeah, that works. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, uh, this was fun. Did you have fun? I had a great time. Good. Now, I, now I want to read the rest of it. I know uh, <laughs> it'll be coming out soon with, for, with other people, but now I'm like, oh, you gotta I know gotta now. know. Yeah. Yeah. You're hooked. <laughs> It, it has taken all the willpower in the world after recording each of these episodes to, not to just like look up it. Yeah. what the fuck's going on. Because yeah. I'm just like, ooh, this is a real, it's a real mystery. Yeah. Well, and I also am refer- re- returning to the eternal enemy. Like, what exactly can that mean? Yeah. You know? AI. It's always AI. Yeah, yeah. she does keep ooh, talking about are how. Are we in, like, Roku's basilisk here? <laughs> 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 Yeah, she keeps talking about like the cosmos, like the eternal, unending, immortal cosmos. So I think she's the eternal enemy. But or it's time. I, she can predict the future via VCR. VCR? I have no idea. Oh man, now I really want to watch the Midnight Club. But we definitely have we to. We will as soon as we're done. This. Yeah, as soon as we finish this book. Um, yay. Well, yeah, thanks for being on the show. Uh, uh, and everyone listening, come back next time. Is there anything you want people to know about? Anything to plug? Um, I work at a marketing agency, so no. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our latest white paper on State of the Data 2023. <laughs> it's a- it's as much of a page turner as this book. Damn right it is. There's still robots in it and algorithms. Oh, so. God, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Um, Chris? Uh, listen to The Sketchy Show with a lot of familiar voices that you hear on this show. Yeah. And uh, uh, go to cactusrodeo.com and read my comics and watch Pop Socket Theater and all that other stuff that I always say. Just subscribe to the show uh, and and... Tell your friends. Send it to people. That's the main thing these days. I'm just like, I want more people to listen to it. And I don't know how to... Uh, I don't know how to market. So, Christine, you market this shit for me. <laughs> you just command TikTok. her to do her job for free for you. Well, she is a robot. TikTok. <laughs> it's like someone's like a massage therapist. And you're like, you want to get up back there and see what's going on? Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this episode. Come back next time to find out what happens with Robot Rayla. Thanks for listening. Weird science. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. 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 Below Grade Level is a Cactus Radio production. You can contact us at podcast at cactusrodeo.com. Subscribe and follow on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify, and follow Cactus Rodeo on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more entertainment and updates.